This is my fifth lecture on the poem Elegy Written in Country Churchyard by Thomas Gray. We had earlier talked about the meaning of elegy, then we had talked about how the theme of elegy is treated in this particular poem. Then I had tried to explain you each line of the poem. Today we would begin with a fresh stanza. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Now, as we had discussed earlier, the poet is singing in praise of people, the rustic people, the obscure people who are lying in their graves in a country churchyard. Now, there is no one to sing for them. It usually happens if any popular person or people who are great warriors or great politicians or uh, great poets, there are many people who write in praise of these people. But there are very few people who even think about people who had lived an ordinary life. Now poet here is particularly singing in praise of these people. The poet has adopted the theme of elegy. The theme is elegy, but the form, as most of the critics say, form is that of an ode, the popular form of ode, which was very prevalent or um, which was very famous at that point of time. So this poem has a theme of elegy, but its form is more or less of that of an ode. Now, uh, when we begin with a new stanza today, um, which runs like this, Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen and waste its sweetness on the desert air. We come to know that this stanza is in connection with the previous stanzas. In the previous stanza, the poet has tried to build an argument in support of these people. He wants to establish that these people, though they had not done much excellent or uh, anything which could uh, say that um, in a materialistic form or in the form of achievements that this is something uh, unique, they did not do much of that sort. They lived an obscure life. But he says that one should not take it for granted by the very fact that they lived a very common simple life that they were not talented enough. He says they did not get any opportunity or they did not get many opportunities to excel themselves. Now with this, uh, uh, with this um, uh, plea or with this uh, argument in his mind, he moves to this stanza when he says full many a gem of purest ray serene. He is comparing these people who are lying buried in uh, a country churchyard. He is saying that these people could be compared to a gem or the gems which lie buried in the dark unfathomed caves of ocean, in dark oceans and there is no one to discover them. There is no one to see them. There they are very bright and they shine but who is there? to uh, discover their purest ray. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen. First is compare them to a gem which is lying buried in oceans and there is no one to see it or praise it. Then is comparing them to flowers which blossom in a desert area and there is no one to see their beauty or feel their sweetness because it is wasted in on the desert air. So he is comparing them to flowers and gems which are not seen by the people, which are not tapped by the people. Some village hampton that with dauntless breast. Now he is comparing them to a village hampton. A village hampton is a person who is a great warrior, who is a great soldier, that even um, villages or uh, countrysides could produce great warriors but they did not get an opportunity like Hampton who could uh, prove his uh, warriorship. The little torrent on his field with the stood. Now he, uh, they do not have any history of dying for their land who are uh, 
raising walls for their land and uh, standing for their fields. Some mute inglorious Milton here may rest. Now Milton, John Milton as most of you know was a great poet but these people are mute. They did not have a voice of Milton. Since did Milton's voice was heard everywhere, he did not remain mute. But these people, they did not have voice of Milton or they did not discover their own tongue. So they had to remain mute for their lives. So what happens? They, they are not glorious like Milton. Some Cromwell guiltless of his country's blood. Now he is comparing them to a politician who was Cromwell. Cromwell was somewhere guilty. And Milton is trying to build an argument that it has been good for these people that they did not get an opportunity enough to be corrupt or to, uh, to, uh, to be unfaithful to their own country. So they, they were not guilty of their own country's blood. So it had been nice for them that they did not get such opportunities in their lives. Now uh, when he, he, moves, he moves, the poet moves with next paragraph which says the applause of listening senates to command the threats of pain and ruin to despise to scatter plenty over a smiling land and read their histories history in a nation's eyes now these people they they have lived a very uh, common routine life they did not give applause or praise of a listening senate, they did not have a house or a parliament who had been listening to their command or who had been overwhelmed by their speech or who had applauded at them. The threats of pain and ruin to despise, nay, they did not have big questions in front of them. The threats of pain, now uh, when uh, you are commanding an entire senate, you are commanding an entire nation, the issues which are there, they are big issues. They are threats of pain or ruin to despise. Or there could there could be ruin. There, there, there could be a possibility that your decision could bring joy or your decision could bring ruin to the entire nation. To scatter plenty over a smiling land. Now you are so powerful that you can make the entire land, land smile and you can make the entire land prosperous to scatter plenty to make make a land prosperous and read their histories in nation's eyes now these these people while they are living well uh, as a king or as a great politician they can see their history would be written in nation's eyes and while living itself they know they would be big people they are already big people or their his their names would be uh, carved in the history in the pages of history of that nation their lot forbade nor circumstance scribed alone their glowing virtues but their crimes confined forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne and shut the gates of mercy on mankind as i earlier discussed that somewhere he is building an argument while talking in praise of great men at the same point of time he is saying that it had been somewhere nice it had been a boon in disguise that these people did not get much opportunity in their life because if they had risen to greatness they would have been somewhere guilty of their country's blood or somewhere they would have uh, been slaughtering or creating a bloodshed so somewhere uh, God had forbade them uh, from uh, committing such crimes. Their Lord forbid nor circumscribed alone. Now their Lord forbid means they, they did not have much fate or the, the, their fate was not all that positive to them or nor circumscribed alone. Now their fate was uh, uh, not so great that their fate was circumscribed. It was li limited. Their growing virtues but their crimes confined. Their virtues, if they had grown, they would have created or committed crimes. But their Lord forbade them from doing so and in a way their crimes confined. They remain restricted. Forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne. Now, uh, since their virtues were not allowed to grow, they were not very ambitious and they did not any require any throne 
through bloodshed and shut the gates of mercy on mankind and they were not um, uh, very cruel to gain their ambition so in a way they remained very kind and merciful to mankind and their ambition did not make them blind enough to be very cruel or to commit heinous crimes against mankind thank you